All right, welcome back to the Long Shot Podcast. Here with SEC All Freshman Team, SEC Newcomer of the Year, Second Team All SEC, probably should have been first. NBA All Rookie Second Team, definitely should have been first. Uh, of course, Miami Heat legend, known to many as the Baby Goat, Boy Wonder, whatever you want to call him, Tyler. <laughs> appreciate you coming on, bro. Thank you very much for joining us. For sure. Thanks for having me. No, of course. Uh, I actually, I want to bring it back here for a second for the listeners uh, to when I first met you, which was Summer League. Obviously, at that point, uh, you know, the, your reputation preceded you a little bit. I, already, I, knew, I knew who you were, of course, seen you play a bunch, but hadn't met you. And yeah. uh, we're gearing up to play Summer League. And Eric Glass, who's a, you know, works on staff with Miami Heat, he was the, the Summer League head coach, comes up to me and goes, because uh, how the Summer League in, in Sacramento was structured is you played Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And he yeah. goes, look, you know, I don't want Tyler to play any back-to-backs. So, you know, he's already going to have a bunch coming at him. Like, it's going to be hard for him to pick up the speed of the game, all this stuff. Like, I want Tyler to play Monday, Wednesday, and I want you to play Monday, Tuesday. Because I want you guys to play together, but I want to stagger it. Yeah. Of course, like six minutes into the first game, it's like very clear that it's just not too much for you at all. Like, this, <laughs> like you're not sped up at all. You're like playing under control. You're making shots. You're setting up other people. Like looking back, what do you remember about that first professional experience that like really sticks out to you? Yeah. Um, I mean, I re- obviously, like you said, just coming into summer league, you don't, you know, know what to expect. You know, it's a jump from college to um, summer league, then to the league. And I was just, just didn't know what to expect. You know, like going in, I'm like, well, am I going to be sped up? You know, do I have to perform and really show people, you know, I am a lottery pick? But, you know, I just really went out there and kind of just, you know, let the game come to me. And like you said, it kind of just flowed and, and went and went how it was supposed to. Yeah, I mean, it's it was clear right away that, that stuff wasn't going to be an issue, at least like in in the summer league level. But then, of course, it, it ramps up even more. But yo, it, it, it's crazy to me to look back at like us, us two, K nine hooping, and like we're, we're trying to win summer league games. Summer league, and, yeah. <laughs> and then and then fast forward a couple months, and we're like all out there trying to win playoff games. <laughs> yeah, all three of us like really heavily in the rotation. Like it's crazy, and it 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 happens so fast. Like that blur for you, is it just like you just taking it as it comes, like one step at a time, or is it? Are there moments in the playoffs when you look back and like, damn, that was like a year ago. I, I was getting drafted and I was playing the summer league, and now yeah. I'm 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 trying to have the the Miami Heat advance. Yeah, uh, it was just trying to embrace you know, you know the moment, like you said, it just happened so quick and. And, you know, for me, just jumping even from like high school to, to college, to college, to the league, it was all it happened so fast. So for me, it was just embracing everything and, and really just letting it all and taking it all in at once. You know, it, like you said, it does happen, happen so fast. And, you know, we're still taking it in as, as we go today. I think it's so funny, Tyler, because like you said, within a two year span, you went from high school to playing in the NBA finals. Yeah. Whereas like Duncan is the opposite, right? He did like five right. years of high school, <laughs> five years of college. Guy feels like he's been in the NBA now for five years. <laughs> right. uh, but you guys were both referred to as rookies last season, but just the, right. the you know, the differences in where you're at in your careers. I'm curious, uh, Dunk, you said in that summer league, Tyler's reputation was preceding himself. What were Tyler, this is for both of you, what were you guys like early perceptions of each other? Tyler, do you remember like playing in that summer league with Dunk, what your first perceptions of him were? Yeah, I mean, I really didn't know. Like, you know, I know Dunk and he played at Michigan and everything like that, but I didn't I didn't know, to be honest, like how good of a shooter he really is. Like until you go out there and you practice with him and shoot with him every day, it's like, yo, this dude has a real life clip. Like every single day, every shot he shoots, you think is going in. Like one of them. Is, so it's just like, and then we got to know each other at, at a personal level and that was you know, I see him working out every day and, and just continuing to put that work in. So and it's just it's amazing to see, like you said, you know, he, he did five years in, in high school or college, or whatever. And I did, too. But, it, you know, everyone has their own own path. And I always tell people that, you know, so it's it's, it's awesome to see, you know, everyone has their own different path. And, and it all ends up working out. 
I, I appreciate you putting that out how you did because you easily could have said that I just didn't have a reputation at that point, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I definitely didn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, of Tyler coming in, like, obviously, like, I remember draft night, right? Like, yeah. you know, I'm sitting there waiting, waiting to see who the Heat are going to draft. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, you know, they're talking about it afterwards. Like, what does he bring to the Heat? Oh, the Heat really needs shooting. The Heat really needs this. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like sitting on my couch, like, I'm like, damn, like, it's like that. Like, but I mean, of course, so like early on, and, and obviously we're both competitive people. Um, yeah. So there's like that, that I don't want to say like chip, but like there's something there where it's like, no, like I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, you know, in every shooting drill, like I'm trying to win that the same way I, I knew you were trying to do the exact same thing. Right. Um, yeah. But then I think, I think for me where it like really started to shift was like you move past summer league. And then when you got to Miami, bro, like I just had so much admiration and respect for the way that you would show up and work like yeah, every, sure. every single day. And it yeah. got to the point where like, you know, between the three of us, me, me, you and K none, like we're just in there every day where like, it almost felt like then it became like, all right, like now we're just the young guys and we're all trying to come in here and yeah. like make noise. Like we're, we're trying to prove ourselves in this league. None of us exactly. had done anything in the league. Um, right. But it's just crazy to think like it just the, the little shift of like, it's only a month, right? You know, you're in summer league and then, and then you end up in the preseason, but so much had changed in that, in that short stretch for sure. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. It's like jumping from, you know, we're the them guys on on the summer league team. You know, we get all the shots. You know, we can shoot whatever shot we want. And then, you know, you get to the to the you know the big you know the actual team, and it's like you know now, like you said, we're here to prove ourselves and really you know make a name for ourselves in the league. So it was just crazy, like you said. We were just working every single day. We were coming in at six in the morning for for, for a month or two there, and it was it was good. I love those times, though. Well, that that was funny in that. Obviously, like like Jimmy's four AM workouts get get yeah. reported and, and picked up by you know the the different media outlets, but like a lot of it started in that like I I found out you were coming in at six AM and I was yeah. like I was like hold on, like like he's not gonna get work in while I'm sleeping like no nah. like, I'm like so then I would I would start to ask you I'd be like T you going in the morning you'd be like yeah man and you were you were like trying to be weird about like yeah bro like come through so then yeah, I would I would be there at, at six a.m. and then we had a little crew at six a.m. and then yeah. of course Jimmy finds out and he wants to be like already done in full sweat with his workout by the time at we get 6 there he pulls up at four thirty full sweat when we walk in the gym like. Uh. He, yeah. he got his beat. <laughs> he did, he he always got to like you know one up everybody else. But I respect it. I mean, it's it's that like collective competitiveness that I feel like has makes us all like a fit for yeah, for the yeah, organization. That's, and that's what they said. You know that chip on our shoulder throughout the playoffs last year is that's exactly it right there. Like like you said, you see me because that was exactly how I was in college. Like if I seen a teammate going to the gym, I'm like, no, nah, I'm going too. There's no way he's going to be getting in work without me, like sitting in the dorm room. That's not happening. So, I mean, that's, that, that's why what makes us you know, special, like you said, as a team. What's it like uh, for the two of you playing with each other? You know, you Miami fans have coined you guys as the Splash Bros 2.0, which I'm all here for, by the way. But we're, we're recording this. Uh, you guys played Orlando. You guys beat Orlando last night. And there was a point in the second quarter where I think the two of you, between the two of you, you hit four threes in a row and four straight possessions. And so it is like, there are these flashes where you guys obviously are two elite shooters. What's it like playing off each other's momentum, feeding off each other's momentum, just being in the backcourt uh, together? Yeah, for me, uh, I would just say like, you know, I love seeing like shooters, especially like Dunn. You know, I've never really played with a shooter that I can say like, yo, he's, he shoots better than me, you know, just as good as me or better. So it's like, I love seeing Dunn come off them screens and just, like you said, you can he can run them off like like the Splash Bros, you know, did and, and they and they still are. But it's just it's crazy. So I mean, I love playing with Duncan and, and just getting him involved, and I love love seeing him, you know, hit threes. I mean, first off, Dave, I, I appreciate you not mentioning the point in the game where I I missed five straight um, early in the game. But uh, <laughs> you know, I, I I think that you know Tyler, I think there's like a propensity to put people in a box too, like like Tyler and I in the same box, especially if you don't necessarily like watch us, like Tyler and I are, are very different players too. Um, 
like Tyler has an ability to create and has like a feel and a vision. Uh, and he's just so like, he's uh, speak on, like he's so much better with the ball in his hand. So, uh, his ability to play on the ball and my, I guess like comfortability with just being off the ball. Like I'm cool. Like, you know, I'll, I'll play off of him. Um, but I will say like seeing th- there's definitely like a, a compounding effect of like, you know, you hit a couple and then even for me, sometimes it starts to feel like the, the rim's getting a little bigger just because yeah, I right. see, I, I see you start to make them. Um, and you get that confidence where like, if you start rattling them off, it can be like debilitating for teams and defenses of like, damn, like, this dude just hit two. This dude just hit two. And we have, obviously, of course, more than just us two that can can go yeah, and make them. No um, but, yeah, I, I actually – I, I want to talk a little bit about your development as a as a player in terms of a lot of people thought coming in that, that that's just what you were, that you were, like, going to come off pin downs and, and do that sort of thing, which you do and are capable of doing. But I think people have quickly realized how much more to your game that you have – uh, have, have you like, has it been a conscious effort to like break down that stereotype of like, I'm just a catch and shoot player or has it just like, do you feel that like you've always had this ability and that now people are just really getting to notice it? Yeah. Uh, I, I would say like, I think people are just starting to notice it. You know, I think growing up and like, I've never been, I've never came off like a pin down and, and like catch and shoot off a pin down or off a wide or something like that. Like that's never really been my, my game. Like, at Kentucky, I come off a pin down, and I'm usually, like you said, I'm first to put it on the floor or put it, you know, something like that. So I think where where really my development has helped in that is I think you've really helped in that too, just where I can, you know, study you and study your footwork and how you get your hands and everything ready coming off the off the catch and shoots. So I mean, you know, I think I think for sure I had to had to break that. You know, he's just a shooter, just a catch and shoot player, but. You know, I feel like every time I'm on on a big stage, I can I can you know try to show people that I have more to my game than just catching and shooting. Yeah, I mean, if you if you watch the high school mixtapes, obviously, like you have the ball in your hands, not st- like you're yeah, creating. Right. And then, of course, yeah. you know, people like people are gonna the talking heads or whatever are gonna say like, all right, but that's you know playing against high school kids in Wisconsin. Yeah. He's not he's <laughs> not gonna be able to do that at Kentucky. But you do a lot. Of, you did a lot of those same things at Kentucky and then yeah. once again the same thing gets said like all right but he's not he's a catch and shoot player at the next in level the like yeah. he's providing <laughs> spacing in the league and then once again it becomes like no like so it, yeah. it, it, for you is that like is it just annoying to like just keep hearing that or is it just like you know what man just keep adding it to the chip like I'm, I'm yeah it's, it's definitely something that, that motivates me you know because like like you said, every level. So they always, and I'm sure they said the same about you. You know, you're not gonna be able to get your shot off or something like that at the next level. But I think that's where that competitive spirit comes in to just continue to prove people wrong. And you know, whatever whatever they say or they may say, you know, like you won't be able to do it at the next level. That that just like you said adds to the chip and adds to the, to the fire. So just coming in year in and year out, you try to add something new and and. You know, really just try to improve your game. Just to to piggyback off of that, and like I, I want to try to get specific in terms of like this off season. I know I know this past off season was was kind of a weird one, just because obviously we had the time before the bubble, um, and then like a brief time after it. But I guess we'll we'll say this moving forward to like this upcoming off season. Is there something that you? Like one one thing, one tangible thing that like, you know what, man, like I, I see so-and-so do this and like I want to add this or, or I want to have this. Uh, or, or do you not necessarily even think about it? You're just locked in on the year right now. Um, I'm definitely already thinking about the offseason, you know, just because as players, we know where we're struggling at, the you know, more than anybody. You know, we know where our weaknesses are. You know, we we know when we're, we're feeling uncomfortable in certain, in certain situations. So. So I'm definitely, you know, I jot notes down and, and, you know, just try to add to my notebook on what I want to work on come summertime. So for me right now, I want to figure out really how to draw fouls, you know, where, where you can get to the free throw line and whether it's off the dribble or even just getting guys in the air and, and throwing your body into them and, and walking to the line. Because I think, you know, the points, points per game can really go up for, for anybody just by getting to the free throw line, you know. Guys walk so a lot of a lot of the elite scores walk into the game with already like Jimmy ten free throws so he's starting with ten points so it's not 
It's crazy. He's really man. getting 17, but then the 10 free throws that adds to 27 every time. <laughs> It, it's actually crazy like and obviously all like all the great scores like you said like that's a natural step but there's also like you, you see people add that to their game i, I think that's yeah. a great one because like it's exactly that it's just something that you need to be like more intentional about i exactly. think about it for myself all the time it's like i have all these opportunities to get guys in the air because people yeah. are jumping at shot fakes but like i just don't have that muscle yet of yeah, like it really is a muscle you have to yeah. really work it and and I, I don't know what it what must how you work it, but you know, you just really like you say, you just had to be intentional about it and and really focus on it. Yeah, now that that takes everything, even if it's like two more trips to the free throw line, right? Like you go from averaging seventeen to twenty one, which is like being obviously a, a really good player to like damn borderline all star. Like it, right. it it just it's like incremental, but it it moves the needle for sure. Exactly. Just little stuff like that. Yeah, no doubt. For sure. Um, I want to ask about, uh, we talked about high school briefly. I want to just take it back real quick. We, we can keep it brief. We don't need to spend too much time on this. Uh, but I remember talking to you last year, talking about when you decommitted from Wisconsin and how you, like, you're like you getting death threats and like crazy stuff. You know, your house is getting egged, like whatever, all sorts of crazy stuff. We don't need to like get too much into that, but do you ever think about like how how differently does everything look right now if you go to if you end up on campus at Madison? I was literally talking about that last night. Like it comes up with my boys like back from back home all the time because it's like you really never know. Um, but just like I said, I've never been a player that that comes off pin downs and plays in like a structured, super structured, like swing offense. And I think right. that's that's where I would be at. So, I mean, I would I would say, my, like I said, I'm competitive, so I'll be able to, to adapt. But at the same time, it's like I, that's not where I would probably fit best. So I'm sure it, look, it would look completely different right now. I might be getting ready for my senior year. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think that like you have – an ability obviously in and like i referenced earlier like you put in the work so i don't i don't necessarily think that it's a guarantee that you'd like still be in college or anything but it is it is crazy and i i I can only imagine you've seen this too of like how important in basketball situation and opportunity is whereas like you might have had all the ability in the world playing for for greg guard but like he might not have just ever given you that opportunity to really be who you are exactly whereas like you go to kentucky and i mean from everything i've heard and tell me if i'm wrong like coach cal is enabling you guys to like be yourself like go be aggressive like be who you are exactly yeah i think i tell i tell even my little brothers that all the time you know it's all about opportunity and even guys young guys who who are already getting ready to commit if they ask me i always tell them you know don't really pick what what the name says on the front of the jersey because at the end of the day it's about what coach is really going to embrace you at that campus and give you the opportunity. And it really, you and the, and the assistant or head coach have to be on the same page of, you know, what your goals are. And, and if that's getting to the NBA, then, you know, then make sure that the coach knows that. Before you got to Kentucky, was it, was it one and done? Like, was that like, obviously it's a goal to, to have the opportunity to leave, but like, were, were you like locked in like man this could be my one and only year no I, honestly coming in i was like i'll probably be here for two years like come in i don't know what i'm gonna do my freshman year we my freshman year or my year that i was there at the beginning of the season we were really guard heavy like i was we had a, two sophomores returning and they were both guards and then you know my class coming in had three or four guards so that's we had like five or six guards on the roster and i was like i'm the lowest recruited you know, guy coming in, there's no chance I'm going to, you know, play. And then I ended up starting. So that's the opportunity that we're talking about. You know, if I don't get that opportunity to to really go out there and, and pro- prove myself, I might be there for two or three years. How much do you think the, your ability to make shots consistently was the separator of getting you on the floor? Yeah, I think that that was probably it, you know. Like it, right? I feel like – Every year at Kentucky, the guy that can really, you know, run off those, you know, curl plays and, you know, can really put the ball in the basket, that's the guy that they really run through. And by the end of the year, they were running everything through me. So 
I, I yeah. would definitely say it has to do with, you know, my ability to, to put it in the basket. I mean, it's it's like you said, like Jamal Murray, Malik Monk, and then and then it was you. Um, it's it's crazy though, man. Like, obviously, I'm, I'm I'm a little biased because obviously that that's what I do is shoot. But like, it's crazy how people get caught up in like like there's always gonna be a role for somebody that can make shots at a high level. Like, no doubt, <laughs> it's 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 honestly the ultimate separator because like every everybody can kind of shoot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you hoop and you and you play at a high level, like everybody can kind of shoot. But yeah. If you do, if you do it to a, a point where it's like, damn, that guy can really shoot. Yeah. It's just like the ultimate separator. Obviously, like I said, I'm I'm biased. <laughs> I'm sure you are too, but that's how I feel. No, it is. And I remember growing up, like I tell someone, you know, my dream should be it, it, getting the NBA, and they're like, well, you can do it if you can really do one thing really well and master what you do. And it was like for me, it was obviously shooting, as as you can can relate. So it's like, yeah. If you can really shoot the ball, you'll be you'll have a job for a while because every team needs someone that can you know space the floor. It's been a long road, but 2021 is looking up. New beginnings mean new opportunities to grow your business. If part of your strategy is adding new members to your team, LinkedIn Jobs finds the right person quickly. To make things better, your first job post is free. Yes, LinkedIn is an active community of professionals with more than 722 million members worldwide and getting started is easier than ever with new features to help you find qualified candidates quickly. Post a job with targeted screening questions and LinkedIn will quickly get your role in front of more qualified candidates, which is what everybody wants. You can manage job posts and contact candidates from a single view as functions are streamlined onto one simple screen. And now you can do this all from your mobile device, no matter where the day takes you. So when your business is ready to make that next hire, find the right person with LinkedIn jobs. And don't forget, now you can post a job for free. Just visit linkedin.com slash long shot. Again, that's linkedin.com slash long shot. One word, long shot, to post a job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, Hoops fans, the tournament is finally here. The brackets have been set and the teams are ready to hit the court. And DraftKings, the leader in One Day Fantasy, is celebrating with their largest free college basketball survivor pool ever. How large? We're talking $1 million large. Whoa. $1 million in total prizes is up for grabs. And if that's not enough, which it should be, but if it's not, check this out. When you enter the free DraftKings $1 million survivor pool, you could get a shot at winning $10,000 for every upset through the first two rounds of the tournament. It's easy to play. Just pick one team per day. If they win, you survive and advance to the next round. Last person standing is the winner. Remember, you can only pick a team once for the entire tournament, so choose wisely. I got some upsets I'm already thinking about that I got in the back pocket here. And remember, DraftKings is a safe and secure app. You can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So get in on all of this week's action. Download the DraftKings app now. Enter code LONG during sign up and enter the free $1 million survivor pool. Again, that is code LONG to enter into DraftKings' free $1 million survivor pool. Eligibility restrictions and terms and conditions apply. See DraftKings.com for more details. I want to uh, get to this year uh, in Miami for both you guys. How different is the locker room today than it was like two months ago? Because two months ago, you guys are... COVID protocol, injury ridden, under 500, and now you're healthy. You guys are rolling a little bit. I assume it is a, a drastic difference being around uh, being around the guys. Oh, yeah, it's it's completely different. I mean, I didn't think I told Dunk that. Um, I forgot it. it was after a game. We were walking back. because We have two separate locker rooms now because of COVID. So, you know, the younger guys are in, the, in another locker room. And I remember going back. I'm like, yeah, just imagine where we were like, I think it was like two weeks ago. We had lost to Charlotte. Everyone was throwing shit around. It was it was crazy. And then we ended up winning a couple of games and everyone's back, you know, temperatures calm. But I mean, I think that's how it should be, especially especially with, 
you know, the expectations that we had coming into the year. You know, we we expected to be good and expected to win. So, you know, I, I expected, you know, if we lose, then people should be upset because that's not that's not who we are. The the last thing you want is to be in a place where, you know, you start seven and 13 and people are just cool with it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I think everyone's looking around and like everyone's pulling their hair out and everyone's pissed off. But it's like shit we're all, we're all pissed off together like we're all in this together and and that's what drives like solutions in that in that obviously you know we get healthy we get some pieces back and we start to figure some things out but like i think that's part of what makes i don't I, i'm not trying to be like corny or cliche but like it, it's kind of what makes you know miami kind of who we are really in yeah. that like we can go to that place and not let it get totally like detrimental and destructive and that we can bounce back and like figure some things out, find solutions and, and move forward. Yeah. I, I, yeah, totally. Cause I think like we were seven and 13, but I think deep down everyone had that thing. Like, yo, we, we're going to turn this around. We're not, we're not going the whole year and ending up 15 and 60 or some shit like that. Like we're not doing that. (laughs) And then Tyler, for you specifically, or you individually, your years looked a little different too. Like there have been spurts where you're starting, there are now spurts where you're coming off the bench, but Spoh's been very open that it's, you know, it's not about who's starting, it's about who's closing games. You're still closing games and you're playing starter minutes. But how does your approach change, whether it's one or the two, whether you're starting or coming off the bench? Yeah, um, it was, it was, uh, it was hard at first, you know, to be able to, you know, start, you know, everyone wants to start and then, and then get moved to the bench. It was, it was a lot mentally at first, but I, I, you know, just try to do as best for the team. And I feel like, like you said, you know, I, I do finish games and, um, you know, I just got to continue to produce in the fourth quarter so that I, I can finish games. But it's it's a it's a trust thing, I think, to be able to finish games and, and be out there when the game's on the line. Uh, I, I want to go back to just kind of like the, the Miami Heat in general. And for you, what were – like your early impressions of, you know, what, like quote unquote heat culture, you know, whatever you want to call it. Like, is there something that really stuck out to you early on? Um, I think, and when you say early on, I take it back like all the way to summer league. Like that first day when we were there in, in SAC, it was like, you felt the heat culture, you know, we walked in and did two days for the training camp and, you know, I'm talking some slides, you know, yeah. that stuff. <laughs> we're doing shell drill and everything. Like, and I'm talking to my other, you know, the other rookies in the league and they're like, yeah, we're not doing two days and stuff like that. But I mean, at Kentucky, that's what we were, you know, we did two days, sometimes three days over, over Christmas break. So it was like, you know, this is what I want, especially young, a young guy coming into the league. You know, you, you want to come in and learn as much as possible and, and really work hard. So, you know, it's, the culture is what it is, but you know we embrace it. Tyler, you talked about your uh, ability to to close games and the faith that the coaching staff has in you to close games. From the outside, like you guys were talking about, right? Like if you can do one thing well, and for both of you, it's shooting. From the outside, it seems like another one of your best value or best skills is just your ability to rise in big moments and big occasions. Like you're not shying away from any moment. Is there anything you attribute that to? Like, is that something, you know, that's obviously something you develop, but where does that confidence come from? Uh, I think just the work, you know, the work we put in, work I put in every day and, and just the focus it takes, you know. And honestly, I've been, I've been seriously, I, I'm not kidding. You, I've been hitting big shots, like, since I was, like, since I started hooping, like, middle school. Like, I've always wanted to take the big shot, like. I don't know. It's just something that I've, that I've grown up with, I guess. Like, I, I seriously used to – I just take big shots. I like it. <laughs> I, I, I think it's like – to to go off of this, like, obviously – like, you check the box of, of the work, but, like, other people check that box too. And, and yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean that <laughs> lights come on, games winding down, that you're built for that. And right. so, I like I, – I, I think, like – Cause I want to make a distinction too. Like there are irrational confidence guys that like, you know, whatever, don't give a fuck. Like they they don't even feel pressure. Like it doesn't even exist to them. And I'm not saying you're in that camp either, because 
I, I, I think it's like from what I've seen, and obviously like I want to hear you speak to it, but it's like this combination of the two, right? And that like you know you're prepared for opportunities, but like you also have something where like I'm I'm just built for this. Like this is what I do. Like I see I see it when the yeah. games come to the, come down to the end. Like you you relish those opportunities and those moments. Yeah. No, honestly, I want it. Like I I want to shoot the last shot. I want to shoot every every big shot. Um, but yeah, I I I I agree. You know, everyone does put in the work, but like you said, it doesn't make you built for that moment. And I, I think. Like I said, I've been I've been taking them big shots since I was real young, and I and it just carried with me. And like when the when the game's winding down, I kind of do this. Like I love to just prove, like yeah, I can make this this shot. I feel it's fun, it's enjoyable for real. Yeah. Um, real quick, I got like two more things for you, then I'll I'll, I'll let you go. Um, but I want to ask a little bit about just like your your rise to honestly like celebrity status in that <laughs> i know we've talked about like on the court how you know you go from playing against high schoolers in wisconsin to you know playing lebron in the finals but like the off the court that that transition has got to be just as crazy like i you know you and i were talking at, at one point and you were like man like i I can't even, I can't go shopping. Like, like what, are, what are you talking about? Like, you know, I'm talking about like, yeah, I'm about to go shop, do this thing. You're like, bro, like what is shopping in public? Like, I can't do that anymore. Like I got a whole, I got a whole crew of people behind me if I go and do that. So like, I'm like kidding a little bit, but like with that being said, like you're, you're a different tier in Miami. Like I'll, I'll just call it what it is. How has that been, that adjustment been? Yeah, um, you. I just try to stick to who I am. Like I feel like, you know, I, I I grew up as a regular regular ass kid. You know, I'm still 21. I'm I'm normal to everybody. Everyone's normal. Everyone's the same. So, it it is crazy like the transition though. Like, cause I I do I do try to go outside, and it is it is obviously different ever since we we got back from the bubble. But it was just it's just different now. Um, I'm sure it is for a lot of guys too. But I mean, it's just. There's levels to this, bro. There's levels. I promise you. Your your different and my different are a whole lot different. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, nah, man. I just I just it's whatever to me. But yeah, it, like I can't. I, I don't really go shopping no more. Like I haven't been right. shopping in, in forever. I don't go outside too much. I'm in the house. That's when you know, like you really got it like that when like you don't go shopping like the shopping comes to you you know what i mean like <laughs> like the the designer whatever ambassadors or whatever they pull up to your house like yo this is the drop we got where you know i'm still getting in my car driving to you know whatever to try to get the latest drop okay. um so all right we I, I got a question we we asked this for all our guests um when you look back on your journey and, and you got a super interesting one, like we said, like particularly the last two, three years have been crazy. Is there a moment that sticks out to you of like a, a pivotal moment that like this was a springboard? This was a catalyst for like my success and that if this kind of had gone differently and maybe it's that decommitting moment um, or maybe it's something else, a conversation you had or an experience that you had uh, that really kind of shaped things. Honestly, I would take it back to senior year of high school, like that summer, right before my senior year. Um, I went to the Nike Academy and it was like a camp, you know, all the top high school players. And um, we we ended up hooping. I was killing at the camp and this Nike rep came up to me. It was just like, yo, you, you can't go to Wisconsin. Like, <laughs> That's just not, that's, if you go to Wisconsin, you're, you're, you're messing it up. Like you can't go there. So I'm like, I start thinking about it more and it's like, yeah. So I ended up decommitting, but I would say then because, you know, it was the camp and then Kobe, Kobe had actually came and talked to us at the camp. And that was like a changing point where he was just talking about his routine and through the league and what he did in the summer to work out and, you know, getting up at 3 a.m., working out till 6 you know, getting his, his kids ready for, for school, taking a nap, working out again. Like, it's just like a lifestyle that you, you know, you become obsessed with that you, that you, you obviously know. Um, but just things like the thing like that, you know, a conversation with, you know, one of my favorite players was, was Kobe. And to hear that really just motivated me. And obviously I did make that, that decommitment and went to Kentucky and it kind of just changed from there. 
So it sounds like the Wisconsin fans should be sending their hate mail to that Nike rep. And not you. Yeah. Same, same thing. It's like, oh no, that guy better be careful. <laughs> I like it, man. It's not, yeah, take the blame off of you, man. It's, it's some, right. some guy from Nike. We don't need to name names, but direct your hate towards him. Guy from um, Nike, man. <laughs> yeah. He messed it all up. You could have Final Fours, Wisconsin, man. <laughs> could have added to the banners um all right so we'll, we'll wrap up here we got our our undrafted segment so once again uh just a, a quick explanation we're looking for the you know the underrated answers uh stay away from you know the mainstream type stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna lead it off here i want to know your your undrafted shoe that you like to play in so maybe okay. like no kobe's i know you like kobe's but stay away from yeah. the kobe's um Undrafted shoe would probably be. I know these might be popular. I don't know. Paul George's, like, yeah. Um, I was wearing those at Kentucky for a long time, and they were they were really comfortable. Like, the you PG. like the older ones though, like yeah, the, the ones. older ones, yeah, yeah the ones. And yeah. I think I feel like those are underrated because a lot of people, you know, don't wear those, especially now with all the shoes out. But I, I still I still rock with those. I was gonna say you you've been wearing them lately, right? Yeah, the, the yeah. PG ones. How often are you changing your shoes, Tyler? Are you playing in different ones every game? No, I don't. I have like six or seven shoes I rotate. You no, know? man's man's got flavors though. <laughs> you know, there's, there's there's nothing basic. There's nothing basic going on in Tyler, except for <laughs> except for the all black. He'll, he'll rock the all black. The all black, uh, yeah. The Those all black PG ones. I'll get. <laughs> Other than that, there's some, we got flavors. <laughs> all right, I got the next one here for you, Tyler. I want the like the underappreciated nickname of yours, because you've got some great ones, Boy Wonder, Baby Goat, you know, with the pinky, you got Bucket. Is there one you wish was circulated more? Like, is there one you really, uh, you know, relate to that you think doesn't get enough uh, circulation? Uh, I like the Boy Wonder one. Like, I feel like the Heat have picked up on it. Kentucky did their thing with it. But like, I feel like the, the general people, you know, they'll call me like Bucket or Baby Go, but I like I like Boy Wonder. And I like that because Bob and I think you you met uh our Duncan knows, but you guys met Fee, I'm pretty sure. Bob Yeah. 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 Um, he he made that for me in like high school. Like he just That's made tough. so we kinda just ran with it and he was the one who ended up, you know, really making that. So shout out to Fee, man. That's my guy. Shout out Fee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, boy wonder right. good to know boy wonder yeah i mean this this is some big time media coverage so now that you say that uh boy wonder is gonna stick man you're gonna see I it like everywhere that. I appreciate uh, you. long shot man there you go there you go <laughs> our, uh, our million listeners are gonna love that yeah <laughs> um all right number three we got your undrafted underrated aspect of living in the great city of miami under c we talked about this before we, we started. I, I want to go with with food, but I feel like there's something that's more unappreciated that I'm missing, and I, I don't know what it is. Food's not a bad answer, though. Like I feel like people hate on the, the Miami food scene like it's not New York or L.A., but I, I really I think it's on the come up. I really do. Granted, no, I don't yeah, really have is. much to compare it to, but still. Yeah, I would say the food for sure, then. I'm going to go with the food. But All right. is, there, is there a restaurant you like? Carbone. Have you Ooh, been there? No, man. Everybody keeps talking about that. I, I got to go. <laughs> Carbone is it's good. Um, I've been there twice. It's, it's good. Yeah, I know they have one in New York, um, but I, I think it just opened in Miami here, right? On the yeah, beach? recently. Recently. I love it, man. Um, all right, bro. Well, hey, thank you for, for giving us some of your time. Uh, we know you're, you're plenty busy. So thanks for taking the time, bro. Uh, we, we certainly really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, man. Well, I'll see you at practice tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow, <laughs> man. <laughs> I All appreciate right, you guys for sure. Yep. All right, bro. All right.